Dude, I didn't even come back here last night because I wasn't feeling good. I was at the WEC, like, for training all day, but then I just went home. Did not feel good. Yeah. Uh, can you pop by some time today to finish? Oh, okay, that's fine. Alright, so that you guys are all finished now. Um, you'll notice I put my desks back into twos and threes. Um, just, we were talking about some things at the meeting yesterday. And I really go back and forth on having groups of four, and I get why CPM does that. Um, but then some people just kind of put it on cruise control and let everyone else in the group drive. Um, now for us, I think we all kind of have ourselves centered in like the I need to learn this because like, I chose to be in this class and for my future self to be happy, my current self should probably do this. Um, but just for what it's worth, if you move the desks when you guys come here, please put them back in the pairs of threes or whatever. We're trying this out for a little bit. Um, and because we had a couple issues. Um. All right, so today, finally, by the way, is Hunter here? No, nope. yeah. nor is Levi. Nor is Levi. Hunter, Levi, I feel better. This is unfortunate. Nora, I actually Nora, brought brought coffee. Wait, Levi can't make it to Laura, what? So, something that's not... So, you know, since the troublemakers aren't here, actually, Satya, what we noticed when you weren't here is it was much quieter. I know, we actually got yeah. so Chris, you guys still have... Yeah, but Chris was just pretty chill. All right, today we're going to continue our proof study, but now, now I haven't really cared the whole time that we've been doing this, but now instead of asking you to do flowchart proofs, we are finally going to specifically, specifically ask you to do two columns, which yeah. makes more sense. So we're really quickly in 33 going to look at how we would flowchart proof this, but then what I care about you to write down is the two column version. So, just so that we're all on the same page, um, I need to try to fix my smart ink because it is not capturing correctly. Yeah. Let's see if I can that. Um, we always start with what we're given, right? Now you have to, and for I think almost all of you, this will hurt you to your core, you have to write down what has been given to you to start. It's essentially saying, here's what's obvious and we know it. But that's different than writing down what I know because of something being told to me. So, what has been given in this situation, what would go right here, which we'll call one, is UTWV is a parallelogram. Right. Boom. That, that's given to us, we're told that. Then, we're able to state what we know because of a parallelogram. So in box two, if I compare, because my flowchart, when it splits, it's essentially saying we're doing the same thing, we're just going to do it multiple times, what would we put in for two if it goes with definition of a parallelogram? They show me the TU... What, Stephen? The other pair, right? So WT to VU. For both of those, though, that comes from definition of parallelogram, so that would go with part two. All of that goes together. Then part three, they state for us, angle B, and I, I would prefer an angle sign in front of those, angle B is equal to angle C. Parallel lines alternate in, so wait, that's not alternate interior. Whoa. How do B and C relate? Corresponding. Corresponding. So then, parallel lines alternate into, if that's your justification, what must they be talking? A compared to B. And then if A is equal to B and B is equal to C, what's A? A is equal to C. A is equal to C by transitive or substitution. So the transitive property is normally used when we say A is bigger than B, B is bigger than C because it translates through. This we normally just say substitution for if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. We call it the just the, well, yeah. It's the no dub. So now, <laughs> yeah. in your notes, set up a two column statement reason. We have to head our columns. Okay. 
is a cost. Now, if my um, smart ink fix itself, we'll call it. Dang it. Nope. So I can't put both. Well, I can if you give me a second to screen capture in a different way. Well, thank you. All right, I'm trying to zoom in on this so then you guys can have the two columns showing at the same time. We, uh, when we start your two column proof work, we'll pretty much always give you a couple of the things that we're trying to fill you in to guide you. So they obviously show you the given first. Get used to writing that, please. And this is where I will tell you something different than CPM. Now, CPM does things to the most accurate, right? I sometimes will accept the not like not 100% as deep as you could go. When I two column proof, I number things so that if I have multiple things with the same definition, they all go together. So instead of this being two separate boxes, if I was doing it, this would be one box that says def definition of a parallelogram. These are step ones. These are both step two, which the other thing we said here is WT parallel to VU. So you could literally write that comma TU parallel to WV. Like you can put them both in the same step if they belong to the same justification, the same reason. Really, what proofs is pushing you to do and why students end up struggling is you have to be able to defend what you're asserting. So if you make an assertion that that angle is equal to that angle and somebody says, why, and you're like, because I know it, that doesn't count. Right? That does not check the boxes. So if you say that angle is equal to that angle because I know corresponding angles are congruent and then I know alternate interior angles are congruent, then it's okay. You can't just say, like, just because I'm My parents are disagreeing. Oh, your parents can say just because. That's because the parental atomic parents. bond. Hmm? Because they're your parents. It is the parental oh, well, atomic bond. Large like Moosh. Because I still say it. Moosh is not even open anymore. Well, yeah. All right. So, because here, <laughs> I'm going to leave you guys, and hopefully I can trust you not to kill each other. No. I need you to work through proof of a perpendicular bisector. So a line is a perpendicular bisector of a line segment if the line is perpendicular, duh, and passes through the midpoint. How can we use this figure, and I would jot a sketch of this in your notes real quick. How can we use this figure with line PM and AB, and actually they also call that line L, because line L is continuous, quote unquote. Line PM is just a segment. So they give you some of what's filled in, but not a whole lot. And this, we've talked about this before, this is our CPCTC, which stands for what? Corresponding triangles are we start with corresponding. A lot of people try to start with congruent. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. But there's no O between. So this, if we read it technically, is corresponding triangles create correspond or congruent. This is why I got all screwed up because CPM does it differently. This is congruent triangles lead to congruent parts is what these symbols mean. But we just use CPC PC. CPC PC. That sounds like a thing you could give away. Yeah. Well, right. I would like the CPC PC. The CPC PC. I've never been to this. No. C P C. Now remember, in the infinitely wise words of Dr. Smith, if you don't know what to do, draw a line. I'm going to give you at least three minutes to work on this. Who's Dr. Smith? Uh, my favorite professor from college. He hated when we called him Dr. Smith, though. He was always like, my name is Jeff. Dr. Smith is what's on my degree.
Who's cool guy? What's the sign for perpendicular measurement? Like a it's just the upside down. Piece. Isn't that the plus sign? Upside Except down. Except it doesn't extend. This is the symbol for perpendicular, whereas this is just for a right angle. Okay, because I didn't have enough space to write all this. Okay. And actually, sorry, your perpendicular symbol should include a right angle symbol on one of the sides. Is there like a sign for bisector? The same thing except with two dashes. I don't know. <laughs> now you're just making it too complicated. I don't have enough space. You're right, but hey. How are you already running out of gravity? So, what's your first reason? Give it. No way you could do it. You could draw like triangles and then PA is just like this. What are we trying to prove? That AM is congruent to MB. I'll tell you, these reasons we don't necessarily have to use right on that step. If you decide to go a different route, as long as you don't break any math rules, that's fine. I just forgot what a bisector is. Cool. So we're we're trying trying to, they both have perpendicular. We're trying to get to that this oh, is a perpendicular right. bisector through proof of showing that it creates congruent triangles. So this is where proof is weird. It's saying, hey, you know this. Now prove something else based off what you know. Really what we're trying to prove is PA is equal to U. So, if we follow their definition of perpendicular, that would tell us that PM is perpendicular to AB. Nope, that is not what I meant. AMMB. Sorry, I totally looked at the wrong points. Perpendicular. What's a bisector? We don't goes, say both at the same time. If we're trying to use definition of a bisector, what do you think it's actually going to tell you? Or what do you think we are going to assert? Why would we be backing up this assertion with the de definition of a bisector? I don't know what a bisector is. A bisector is something. Not A B. A M is congruent to M B. That would be reflexive. So we've now got a right angle relationship. And here we could also continue this reason and say that is. Sorry, I keep writing the wrong points up here. I don't know what's going on. Because I can't see. It's PM. Definition of perpendicular A of it to MB. So I think I got my two different steps switched around in my head. PM is perpendicular to AB or MB, but MB is not as useful as saying AB. You could also just say line L. So then AM congruent to MB, okay. If we have, from here we could have continued and said angle AMP is equal to angle BMP is equal to 
90 degrees. Right? Because if something is perpendicular, it makes two 90 degree angles. We could have just separately said AMP is 90 degrees, BMP is 90 degrees. Now, somebody made a joke about reflexive property, but we actually are going to use that here. What is PM? Yeah. So, if we say PM is congruent to itself, no doubt. sloppy it's my bad so we've got a side pair of angles and another side I'm not looking for any sass however what can we prove here APM is congruent to BPM APM is congruent to BPM or whatever order you want to put those that correspond with each other so if you go PMA, PMB. Positive mental attitude. PAM, PAM, <laughs> is going to be equal to PBM. So we relate our triangles. PAM is congruent to PBM. And how do we have that? Positive B. Now, to protect you on the ACT, SAT, whatever, you don't just say side angle side. You say side angle side, triangle congruence. I don't really see the triangle mm -hmm. here, too. Side angle side, triangle congruence. <laughs> well, I just side angle side, square so, congruence. So hear me when I say this, Satya. To protect you on the ACT, the SAT, any large, write more than the minimum. If you just leave it SAS, they probably, like, I would write out side angle so side triangle congruence. Now, you don't have to hear from me, but I'm just telling you, on those big assessments, be explicit, be super obvious. And then, because we know all that, we can CPCTC to prove definitively that, yeah, AM equals MB. PA equals PB, all that good stuff. We can say then AM MB, but yeah. we already knew that actually. What we didn't know for sure, what we. Hey, let's wrap this real quick. What we care to state down at the CPCTC, which I can't really scroll to right now, is the AP and the BP. We didn't know those. We knew AM and MB. I know we can define that again with congruent parts on the triangle, but we don't need to. What we need to talk about is PAPB. Understood? Wait, let's disprove this now. Well, you can't. We can't. Let's do it anyway. That's not a question, but it does feel like it. Wait, what? So. I don't get it. If we go look at 37, we have two different things we want to prove. In part A, we are trying to prove, I don't know why C. it cut off C. Yeah, I don't know if that's just how I'm zoomed in or what. But that C is the midpoint of BD. And then in B, totally separate, GH is congruent to MF. Well, we can prove it's pretty easy. So, go for it. Oh, God. <laughs> then... Hold up, here's where it gets serious. I'm going to invite you to show your written proof using the doc camera. So not come up here and write on the smart board, but just show us and explain to us how you got C is the midpoint of BD or GH. I'm gonna have to use good handwriting. Mm. Oh, sorry, I'm backwards. They tell, that's your given. My bad, this is, I'm, I'm oh, flipped okay. instructions. We will get to the, that's oh, your so given. Okay. You have to then prove the triangles are congruent. I looked at way too much stuff this morning. Jacob, how do we do this? I looked at way too much stuff this morning. No, I mean, everyone's having a wonderful Well, you can prove to me you have to go from there. But, um, this is super easy, though. First thing we normally do is define some stuff. Even if we're told that something is the midpoint, we need to define what that means. What else is given beyond just what is told to us? What uh, from the is a, is, uh, 
A, B is uh, A, angles B, B and D, 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 D is parallel. D is parallel to A, B. Now that is given based off the image. So in our given stage, we should have two things listed. C is the midpoint and that parallel relationship. Because here's the deal. If you haven't written it as part of the proof, you can't use it. So if you want to be able to use that parallel relationship, you better show how you know that. Did we derive it or were we given it? If you want to use it, you got to state it. Face. By the way, midpoint, you can kind of abbreviate like that if you want. So this is what I mean by lumping stuff together. I think that's everything given. So then... I'd move on to say. What's the next thing you guys stated? I um, said angle C. I said angle C. I said D is to B. This can go up to B. Yeah, you can do D and D. Okay. D and D. Yeah, I want to say interior. Then you could do angle. Hold up, hold up. A. D is congruent to B. Oh, B, you guys said. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I, my brain hears different things. Why is that? Alternate and interior. Angle. Is there anything else that's going to use alternate and interior? So we might as well do that right now. A congruent to E and use the same reason. You can do vertical to C. Even if we don't have to use it, I like that you're thinking about that, but we could we can have more than what we need. That's okay. But because yeah, we're here we right now, Thomas, they just said we might we're as well less, say it. Okay, I do my work while I'm your work. <laughs> hey, if no one I like, can't write if no one paper. entertains his complaints, it doesn't matter that he's complaining. Just don't like don't entertain it. What do we state next? Actually, in my brain, I probably would have gone to this second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could. We still haven't even defined the midpoint, though, guys. At some point, we need to say BC congruent to CD. Guys, we have to state this. I don't care that they told us midpoint and we know what it is. What if someone's reading our proof and they don't know what a midpoint is? That's the point of our proof, Thomas, to help somebody understand something they don't understand. So at some point we got to define definition of midpoint. Then you can't just say angle C. There are four angle C's and actually more if we made it happen. So then we, you, you could make a lot of angle C's. A, C, B. Why? Now all we need is a U. B C then C So we have some congruent angles. A lot of congruent angles actually. Wait, no, we have three congruent angles actually. All of the angles. All of the angles. And we have one side. We can do angle side angle now. And we could also do angle angle side. Awesome. Asa was actually a student here a couple years ago. Yeah, you play guitar. We had a band for a month. His brother played my band. I got to play guitar for some too. A. I'd rather have kids. Like, play, like, I'll bring my drum set. Um. 
as long as you get the order right down here, A, C, B, E, C, D, of the triangles, you're fine. And there's two other ways that you can write it using the right order. You said E, C, A, C, B, right, long. Yes, wrote and out. That is not correct. Wrote and worry about it. I am worried. I will get it written for you right now. Hey, Lafayette, sharpen this one right there. You've infected Mr. Hudson. Oh, what a throw. Oh. Hey, wait a second. Stop. Where did you keep your sharpener? Do part B over here now. Do part B and then Ready? promise I'm just going to have somebody show their proof up here. Actually, I'd love to compare two different proofs that are done differently but get to the same place. Because you can always switch the order of these things around a little bit. What happened to like pig, your blue pig sharpener? I don't know. Trust me, if I tried to keep tabs on every single thing in my classroom, I would go crazy. Now, I'm not saying I won't go crazy. Where are all those keys? What? Keys? Keep tabs on my nerves. What? Computer keys. Keep tabs on my nerves. Wait, do computer keys cost that much? It's hot glue. It's a lot of plastic if you're buying a key for literally everything. <laughs> Especially if we're counting like pieces of paper. Uh, the joke's gone dry. Do no. proof no use. B. You are dry now. Huh. No. So we're essentially trying to show that the hypotenuse is. Or sorry, we know that the hypotenuse is R2 and R1. So essentially, what are we doing here? We are told. Can we just use HL? Uh, yeah, nope. you can use that. We are trying to prove the hypotenuse legs here. Does this mean that oh, the okay. right triangle is going to be an angle set of three? So we've got the right angle. We've got KG congruent to MP. We've got GH congruent to MN. Wait, what are we trying to prove? That the triangles are congruent. Because I want to tell you a, not. Is there a way? I'm sorry, because HL is just like, okay, great, we're done. Like, can we get it if we didn't know hypotenuse leg was a theorem? We'd be in the other class, and we'd be doing it. <laughs> Actually, no, we learned it. You just get a hypotenuse leg, and then you just do your side. You can't use hypotenuse Is there another theorem that we use in getting to our hypotenuse leg theorem? Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, we're unknown on the last one. Then we can use like substitution and stuff, but that's such well, an effort. What is right? Hold up. I need everyone to shut your mouth for like 30 seconds and just think. What other theorems do we have in our toolbox, or whatever you want to call it, that work with triangles, side lengths, and angle measures? We don't have technical lengths, we don't have technical angles, so no, we could not use trig. But we've got a 90, but we can't use 90 in the trig. Is there a piece stuck in there? Yeah. Okay, I got you. It looks like I'm trying to cross the wall. <laughs> I mean, maybe. See, it looks like. But you're doing it very simple. But you don't know the two angles. Wait, no. This AG. Um, and this is the thing about sure. I don't like point seven. Yeah, I picked this up off my phone. I will get this though. You get shut down my mouth and so. What theorem dealt with? Is there a way we can use hinge theorem? I'm still not really sure what hinge theorem is. Mm. I just know that, like. You guys might need to chat with each other about that real quick, then. I know it's like as the thing turns, like, open more angles. It means that, like, GH has to be. Um, 
It has to be less than legal. Look it up. Look up Hinge Theorem in the back of your book. Is it GH has hey, to be... Hey, I got this. GH has to be less than HK and KG combined. Yeah, Alright, lamos. I'll look it up for you. Thank you. Yeah, I just called you lamos. Deal with it. Oh, well, like glossary. Control F, or in your book, you know, it's alphabetical. Oh, it's G. Oh, find. Wait, how do I, where's the glossary in the book? I'm on your computer. I thought glossary Do you guys not G. have, is Hinge Theorem really not in the CC? Well, I'll Google. It's all the truth. I think it's because maybe they define it in Math 1, and then they just don't have it in this glossary. Whoa. Um, trying to find a good example relating to this one. Let's, let's just find this question. Like, just see the question when looking at this form. Or it could just be it's a crocodilian head. This actually might be from my video. <laughs> yep, this is from my video. Yeah. From Math 1. Oh, yeah. This is literally like Google takes screenshots from people's videos. Um, this is from me. That's why I said <laughs> side player. So, the hinge theorem is basically saying think of a hinge of a door. Yeah. If you have the door opening and you have the door, and you say the door opening and the door at fixed lengths, and this angle is the same as another angle with the same door opening and the same door length, then the opening created between my elbow and my fingertips has to be the same opening. Right? So that third distance then can be related. Do we have a situation like that here? Can you explain that using like the triangles up there? Yeah. So, you read me that? You imagine that we have a hinge. Yeah. Oh, it's like concatenating. Um, I Over want the dot. I do not want a lot. Wait, name is I don't know. Oh, Sal. You know? oh, it's Sal. So, we have Sal. one length. Yes. And we have another fixed length. Doesn't have to be the same as this, just when you think about it, kind of think of a door opening. Yes. Then. So if we call this like A, and we call this, you know, like, well, actually we don't need to know that. In the situation I'm trying to encourage you guys to think about, if we call this B, and then you know angle V, I guess we'll call it. If you have another situation oh. with an A, with a B, and a V set up the same, it's the same. Like, it has to be. So the hinge theorem essentially says, if I can prove that this opens the same opening and uses two of the same fixed lengths, the third fixed length would have to be the same if the angle's in the right location. Because the dangerous thing then is what if B actually flips over this way? This angle, can it be the same angle and still connect? Well, no. Not if it's in this location. The only way with length B that we can connect with angle V is over here. Yeah, because with hinge theorem, both the uh, other angles have So can you just write G H equals I mean is congruent to M N and then an angle K and T are congruent. <coughs> so look at this, I'm gonna slide this here again. So if angle A equals angle X, when we have the same two lengths surrounding that angle then BC must equal YZ. Conversely, if not, so here they're kind of showing A not equal to X, then BC will compare to YZ similarly. So if A was bigger, then we know YZ is going to be smaller. So in this, not that, in whatever I set up for you guys, Can, can a student try to explain? Now, I'm not saying that this will necessarily work. I'm just pushing you guys. So, are you playing the hinge theorem? So, 
yeah, that works. works. Then this is, then this is, we know it's perfect because this is the 90, we know yeah, that it's the 90, and then it's in the same position relating to the two finger like side of the reach triangle for Hume, Sarah, and Marx, and then it's going to be small. Okay, so do you know how like S, M, and not? You, you remember how like S, S, A doesn't work? <laughs> yeah. So because of ASS, yeah. In hit in on hinge theorem, you said that if you have two different triangles and as long as you have two, never, never mind. Never mind. I will throw you guys a metaphorical bone. Are you calling us dogs? Yeah. That's where that expression <laughs> comes from. You throw the dog a bone, like come on, give give him something. We're metaphorical dogs. If we go to use hypotenuse leg here. What would we first need to put in our proof? Or we could do GH yeah, is in the good thingy mob operation. Well, yeah, so it's 90 degree angle. So we know Actually, no, you do um, angle P is equal to angle K. And so yeah. Angle K. yeah, there's still something more effective. You guys are still missing. Uh, triangle GKH is congruent. KG is congruent What kind of triangles do we have? Right, right triangles. triangles. I said that. We first need to state right triangles. Chris so said that. There will like, be, when you guys all talk at the same time, you cannot be mad when I miss I something that one person said. Games. If we want to use hinge, or sorry, hypotenuse leg, we first have to state that they're right triangles. And that's given from the diagram, but we got to state it. And then, since we know they're both right triangles, we've already defined their congruent sides, then we're allowed to use hypotenuse leg. I just wanted to push you guys to see if there was anything else we could apply. We technically cannot apply hinge theorem here. Um, I just wanted to reuse it. The reason is, in order to apply hinge theorem, what we would need to know is um, an included angle and two of the sides that come off of it. So if I had angle H... So had angle... And P. You would need or sorry, N over here. And, and we also had that line and this line as the so surrounding. Well, ignore the other line I gave us. Um, so here, I'll do this. Some weird symbol. Then the hinge that is opening with the two fixed lengths coming off the hinge, if this is the same hinge, angle size, and the same two fixed openings, this has to be congruent to this. That's how the hinge theorem works. So if we weren't given MP and KG, if instead... SAS? Yes. So if we were given that's KG what, and KH... I just wanted to bring back hinge theorem and make sure that we're still remembering all these other theorems that we can use in our proofs. So is it an SAS theorem or more complicated? Yeah, but hinge theorem is used outside of triangles too. Oh, okay. Like just for other, like when we get to circle, like back to circle work, oh, wait, we're going to be able to use. The, so just hang on. Okay? So, many so all that I care for you to see here is, yeah, hypotenuse leg worked for the situation we were given, but if I was given hypotenuse and a different leg, and like an angle, this we could side angle side. But, Satya, what I'm saying is when we use Hinge Theorem, we're proving KG congruent to PN. So you're trying to prove two different openings are congruent. Um, that, so this will come into play when we have, let's say, a circle and some... Yeah, oh, yeah, different we, different applications here. Do we learn about really finding really areas that are like side lengths of like arcs and circles yet? Not yet. Okay. It's real easy though. Because I thought, oh, I know my theory number. I want to nail the map test. And then, yeah, what is the length of this arc? No, excuse me. <laughs> Check it. Please explain. Because you asked. If we have a circle with radius r. The circumference, or the arc length, is, is 2 pi times r, right? So in the unit circle, a single circumference 
is 2 pi. In any other circle, a single circumference is 2 pi times whatever the radius is. So you know that this, instead of being 1, is, I don't know, 15. And you go, I don't know, 60 degrees, you have everything you need. First, figure out the entire circumference in pi terms, and or as take, a decimal. And then you take a six of that. A six, because and 60 you, out of 360. Okay, well that's just easy. All right. Sorry, 360 times whatever your circumference is. You just told us I think we would have brought a 300 on the map. Well, yeah. We just haven't gotten there yet. We're, this is our circle chapter that I believe I know, is chapter I 10 or 11. Chapter, like beginning of next year, at least one circle. of us will have it. So that, let me find where that work is. Where do we get back to circle? He says you haven't already. Uh, eight. Actually, next chapter. <laughs> yo. Next chapter, we get back to circles a little bit. Nines modeling with functions. That's like two weeks. Later. Wait, how many chapters do we have? We only have twelve chapters. I mean, it's ten. It's ten is deep circle yeah. work. So I don't know if we get to those rules in chapter eight, but we will get there in chapter ten. Wait, so we're in chapter seven, and it's only been halfway through the year. Well, and more we than halfway. Five chapters left. Yeah. We're we at have? an okay pace, but think about it. Quarter four is super jacked up. Oh yeah. Travel May term. Like predicative option is about to start happening and shortening that's classes. That's why it's called like M term because May. I thought it was midterms and that's just what I know it as. Um, so yeah. you guys can go ahead and head out to lunch. I know. Yes. Midterms are. Have a great day, guys.